This is Jay Perella, owner of Rubber Chin Comics. And this, this is Joe Medeiros, one of Jay's business partners. And no, they're not crazy people. Just happens to be Saturday, October 29th, and Rubber Chin Comics is holding a costume contest for Halloween. Rubber Chicken Comics. We, uh, we opened up back in 1990. Um, my dad actually wanted to open a store. He wanted to do a sci-fi collectible shop. Um, but back then, he had just re uh, retired from being a police officer for 25 years. Wanted to open up a sci-fi shop, but there really wasn't like a huge market for it in general. And we tried to figure out a way, you know, what would bring in people like all the time. And we automatically thought of comic books. We're like, all right, comics come out once a week. Actually, at the time, back then, they were actually coming out twice a week, Wednesday and Friday. So that gave us a reason to have customers coming in literally twice a week, no matter what. So we turned it into a sci-fi collectibles and comic shop back then, 1990. My dad owned and ran the shop for uh, 10 years, from 1990 to actually 1999. Uh, while that was happening, my brother was the head manager, and I basically just worked for him. I was, I was, you know, I did all the grunt work. Um, I did all everything from you know register to, to restocking to everything. When my dad actually decided to close up shop back in 1999, me and my brother said, "Oh, you know what? We want to keep going with this business." So we decided to reopen, and we reopened in uh, Bellingham in 19. I'm sorry, in uh, what was it? Was it 99? It might have either been 99 or the summer of 2000. I guess like the Stormtrooper costumes just always fell apart in the movie, and uh, oh, I believe it. I mean, yeah. you know, he, he didn't know any better. <laughs> I think I think uh, I think Lucas had about five costumes. They just kept using them over and over. <laughs> Now the start of digital comic distribution truly began on November 13, 2007 with the release of Marvel Digital Comics Unlimited from Marvel. Though Marvel had experimented with this concept in the past, it was never to this degree. With Marvel Digital Comics Unlimited, they had created a subscription service with over 2,500 comics available to subscribers, with new comics added on a weekly basis. But the newest issues would not be made available until six months later in response to fears from comic sellers. In 2010, there was a surge of tablet computers that hit the market including the iPad, the Kindle, Galaxy Tab, and many more. With the tablet's touchscreen functionality, this gave the consumer the ability to read whichever book they wanted with ease and could allow the user to carry their entire library with them. Comic distributors quickly jumped on board with this and created apps that allowed people to read comics on their tablet computer, and soon some new comics were made available on the same day that their physical counterparts were released. On September 1st, 2011, DC Comics relaunched their entire lineup of graphic novels, declaring it the New 52. This not only allowed new readers to start fresh, but for the first time, each new issue would be made available at both stores and online on the same day. I think digital comics are a great idea. I've always said this. I've been actually interviewed many a times about it. Um, I, think, I think it's a great way for people to actually have access to unlimited comics that they normally would not um, regularly get, be it an old comic that they can't afford, or a new comic that they see on the shelves, but they say, ah, you know, it's just not something I really feel like uh, picking up right now. Uh, being able to have access to digital comics is just genius to me in the idea. The problem is the price. Um, I think digital comics should be a lot, uh, in my personal opinion, they should be cheaper. Uh, just, you, you know, you're paying the exact same amount of money for a digital comic than you would a physical comic. Uh, then when you, you end up having your collection, you've got a collection on your tablet or whatever you know, device you're using, whereas everyone else has you know, box after ba box of comics that are actually could, m might not, but could actually retain serious value if not go up. Uh, I mean, if it's just a reading standpoint that people are doing, then that's great. You know, all you want to do is read them. You don't want to collect them. Fantastic. Uh, but all the collectors out there, you know, uh, they're actually buying their physical copies a to collect, you know, and enjoy, and B to read. So, to make people pay the exact same amount of money for a digital copy, it just seems absurd. Just the physical aspect of it. Um, 
Again, I have not I have not gone through all the digital books that I can actually find. I've you know I've I've gone through them here and there. But again, when you come into a comic shop, and you go through a comic box, let's just say you're going through a back issue bin where you're you're flipping through the newest Buffy the Vampire Slayer issues, and then right behind it is also Batman. You know you don't get that on digital. You don't get the the whole feel of of the comic shop. You walk into a comic shop, and as long as it's a good comic shop, you can sit there and you can talk comics with the guy, you know, left and right. Uh, when you're buying digital, you've got nothing to go on but what your friend told you the other day. You don't have a whole shop filled with ideas, filled with, oh, I, I, I didn't even think about that, but I just looked up on the wall and I realized, you know, I had not seen the newest Moon Knight episode, you know, issue that came out, stuff like that. Um, talking to people, uh, interacting with customers, you know, other customers that actually, you know, a lot of people walk in and just say, you know, well, what are you guys reading? What do you want to read? You know, I mean, unless they're actually, you know, on, you know, chat rooms and stuff, again, it's taken away from the physical as aspect of everything that's going on, um, in which case it gets very sad because everyone's just living in a cyber world and doing nothing but, you know, reading digital comics alone but talking to people online. As of right now, the distribution of digital comics is still flawed from becoming an acceptable alternative to the sale of physical comics. However, with the closing of borders, the outlook for these types of businesses looks bleak, as it seems that there are more and more people starting to choose digital over physical. Well, who is uh, Josh? Well, uh, you know Josh, uh, one of our customers. He's got it actually on cassette tape. Oh, really? Yep. It's funny. It's like, I'll burn you a cop. You know, like, okay. <laughs> Never did. It was <laughs> even funny because, like, my truck and my car both have cassette decks. I don't have CD players at all. They don't have CD players at all. See, it's weird. When I got my truck, it still had a cassette deck, but it had the CD. It's like, yeah, I'm like, I mean, it was a 2004, and it still had a cassette deck. Oh, no deck. kidding. Yeah, and I'm like, huh, that's weird. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's day to day. Every single comic shop out there, they, we all watch. We all watch and see what's happening with digital. Um, and basically, everyone evolves the same way. You just take your community and you really, you know, take a hard look into what they're into and what will bring all the surrounding communities into your shop. Uh, be it posters, be it apparel, uh, be it toys. And literally, you just focus on that because we're all, when it comes down to the heart of it, we're all comic book stores. We're all going to have a massive amount of comics. We're all going to push comics. You know, it's literacy. You know, it's reading is fundamental. You know, you push a cat. You know, you push a kid to read a comic. They'll come back for more and they'll keep reading more. First and foremost, we're about literacy, and that's you know that's like a key element for any community. So when when you've established that, then your community embraces you, and again, you give back to them. What do you people want from us? Um, so unless you're actually involved with the community and finding out what they're looking for and what they expect, you're going to crash and burn. But as long as you actually have your feelers out there and actually see what they want, you should be able to evolve no problem whatsoever into, again, a comic shop that has their needs and their wants taken care of. Over the next five to ten years, the plan is just to get bigger, um, bring in the, the things that actually we bring in the things that actually put us on the map. Uh, back in the 90s, everyone would come to my comic store to actually pick up all old 80s stuff, like from Star Wars to He-Man to G.I. Joe, um, all the original toys. Um, that, that, like I said, that put us on the map. A lot of people were specifically coming to our store just to come for that. So we're going to incorporate that a lot more into the store. Uh, we're going to push the limit as far as comics to see how many more people we can actually get in. We're going to just, you know, we're going to aggressively go out and actually look for people and tell them, you know, you should be reading comics. Come on in and check it out. If you don't like it, no big deal, but I think you're going to dig it. Um, we're going to incorporate more that I think that my customers want. Uh, uh, a bigger base of clothing line, a bigger base of trade paperbacks for now, a bigger base of action figures, a bigger base of, you know, band-related merchandise. Uh, anything that, that a comic fan would actually also have in their head in mind when they walk into a comic shop, I want them to see in my shop. So that is my goal for the next 10 years, just to become bigger and better and make sure that I take care of the community and they actually enjoy it. The evolution of comic book stores seems to be an inevitability and they must learn to adapt to the changing of times like so many things. The future is unknown to all of us but it's something that we all must face. Neither Jay nor I 
know what will happen to Robert Chain Comics and other stores like it in the future. But we all must put on our capes and utility belts to face whatever the future may throw at us.